The opening scene features a veterinarian named Nick, who is examining a client's dog. He suddenly receives a call from his old friend Lou, but chooses to ignore it. Meanwhile, the client recognizes Nick as a band singer from the early 80s, so he makes a sarcastic remark about his current profession. In response, Nick throws away the dog's waist, causing the client to feel sick. On the other hand, we are introduced to another one of Nick and Lou's friends named Adam. Upon returning home from work, Adam discovers that his girlfriend has taken several belongings from his house before leaving him. His nephew Jacob, who is obsessed with video games, resides in the basement. Adam suggests that Jacob move in with his mother, but the teenager reveals that she has already fled the country with her new partner. Elsewhere, Lou carelessly drives his car into a garage while singing loudly and air drumming. He then steps on the accelerator, causing smoke to fill the garage. In the next scene, Lou is rushed to the hospital due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Since he has no family to care for him, the hospital administration contacts Nick and Adam. Although the doctor suspects that Lou attempted to commit the unthinkable, he denies it. He says if he was gonna do that, there's only one way to go. Shotgun to the dick! Afterwards, Nick and Adam visit the hospital room and find Lou sleeping. In a hushed voice, they whisper to each other about the possible reasons for their friend's tragic attempt. Lou, who is awake this whole time, throws a pillow at them and mentions that he ended up in this state because they didn't answer his calls. In an effort to lift his spirits, Nick and Adam invite Lou to the Kodiak Valley Ski Resort, a place which they used to visit frequently in the past. They also promise to cover his expenses, knowing that he is severely debt-ridden. The following day, the three friends, along with Jacob, embark on a journey to the Kodiak Valley Ski Resort. After several hours of driving, they finally arrive at the destination, but they find that the place is just a mere reflection of the town they used to know. Upon checking in at the hotel, they are greeted by an irate bellman with one cut arm named Phil, who pulls their luggage. Later, Jacob draws their attention to a hot tub outside their room, but they find a dead raccoon inside it. Nick reminisces about how they had a great night in this same room in the past. As they talk, the balcony door suddenly opens, and the hot tub illuminates. It has miraculously become clean and tidy. The four of them jump into the tub with excitement and enjoy the night to the fullest. In the midst of their fun, though, they inadvertently spill an illegal Russian energy drink named Chernobyl onto the hot tub controls. The next day, they wake up in the hot tub, and Lou immediately vomits on a squirrel. After this, they go skiing and try to reenact their college days, but Lou accidentally collides with the other two, causing them to tumble off a cliff. Thankfully, they all survive the fall without any injuries. However, the group soon starts to notice that something is amiss with their current surroundings. They begin to realize that the restaurant they are in is filled with pop culture items from the 80s, and all the people are dressed in retro clothing. Perplexed, the group returns to their room to try and make sense of the situation. However, their confusion is compounded when they encounter Phil, who has both his arms intact. They then head back to the hot tub, and after a bit of staring, Jacob deduces that they must have been transported back in time by a some sort of hot tub time machine. In the bathroom, they are shocked to see their younger selves in the mirror. They wonder how Jacob is present when he shouldn't be born yet. While the group argue about their situation, a mysterious repairman appears and warns them not to change anything as it may alter history. As the group comes to terms with the drastic change, they realize some unpleasant events from their past. Adam went through a painful breakup with his first girl girlfriend and was stabbed in the eye with a fork. His sister Kelly had Jacob with an unknown father. Lou was beaten by the ski patrol bully named Blaine, and none of his friends came to his aid. Finally, Nick's band's performance ended disastrously at an open mic contest. The four are deeply concerned about the potential ramifications of altering the past in any way. To minimize the risk of the butterfly effect, they come up with a plan to recreate their past experiences. Specifically, Adam needs to go through the painful breakup with his girlfriend Jenny and get stabbed in the eye with a fork. Lou has to pick a fight with the ski patrol bully. Nick must perform with his band at an open mic event and also make out with a fangirl. Nick is definitely getting the best deal here. Later, as they are getting ready to carry out their plans, they run into Kelly, who is Adam's sister and Jacob's mother. She explains that she is looking forward to making out with a random guy tonight. This creeps out her future son, so the group quickly departs. After this, they continue with their plan. Adam goes to Jenny's room to break up with her, but she seems interested in rekindling kindling their relationship. At the same time, he recalls how Jenny stabbed him after breaking up with her. Afraid of the outcome, he urges her to go with him to the concert instead. Meanwhile, Lou gets into a fight with Blaine, but ends up getting beaten up and having his bag stolen. As he sits nursing his wounds, a woman approaches him and offers to take care of him. Lou agrees, but Jacob tries to send her away, as it's not part of their original plan. Elsewhere, Nick rejoins his band and makes out with a fangirl, reluctantly. At the concert, Jenny joins the crowd while Adam stays behind 
night at the bar, a woman named April, who is a journalist covering the event, approaches him and starts a conversation. Elsewhere, we see Jacob and Lou in the same woman's room, where she starts making out with Lou. Jacob decides to leave, but the woman insists that she wants both of them. However, before anything can happen, she receives a call from her mother, and while she's away, Jacob angrily leaves. The woman returns shortly after, but she refuses to continue, as the younger boy has already left. Meanwhile, Jacob goes to the concert and learns that Adam has not broken up with Jenny yet. When asked about it, Adam claims that maybe breaking up with her was a mistake, and now the universe has given him a chance to correct it. The group later gathers in a living room, and Adam is scolded for not finishing his task. Lou is the angriest one, but Jacob exposes him too by revealing that he tried to sleep with a woman he wasn't supposed to. Enraged, Lou declares that if Adam can change the past, he can too. The statement makes Jacob flicker in and out of existence, so he warns his group that if they continue to change the past, he may be permanently erased. Scared that he will lose his nephew, Adam immediately visits the bar in an attempt to break up with Jenny. However, before he has a chance to speak, she hands him a breakup note herself. This enrages Adam as he realized that Jenny stabbed him in the past when she wanted the same thing as well. He then reveals how she will get pregnant with several men in the future. Unfortunately, Jenny takes this as an offense, so she stabs him with a cocktail fork, repeating the same event from their past. On the other hand, Blaine discovers some strange items in Lou's bag and suspects him of being a Russian spy. In the next scene, Lou and Nick are at a bar where a lot of people are watching a sports game. This gives Lou an idea. Because he knows the future events, he places large bets on the matches and wins a lot of money. After a while, a man challenges him to a high-stakes bet and Lou confidently agrees. However, just as his prediction is about to come true, the squirrel that he had previously vomited on intervenes, causing him to lose the game as well as all his money. This proves that even the slightest alteration of the past can lead to severe consequences. In their room, Jacob discovers Adam drinking and writing breakup poems. Out of nowhere, the mysterious repairman appears and informs them that the hot tub needs more repairs. Jacob tries to gather more information, but when he turns around, the man has vanished again. After a while, Jacob leaves to search for his other friends while asking his uncle to stay in the room. However, Adam also heads outside and starts gazing at the stars. Soon, the journalist from earlier, April, joins him and they have a romantic conversation. She then takes him to a house that she claims is her friends. There, they enjoy some drinks, and Adam shares about his father's tragic death due to E. coli. April advises him not to let the incident ruin his life. As they lean in for a kiss, the homeowner arrives, prompting them to flee. Back at the bar, Lou writes down a list of things he wants to change for the future, while Nick is lost in his own thoughts. He confesses that his wife Courtney cheated on him, despite the fact that he had dedicated his life to her. As a result, he has now lost his friends and passion for music. However, Lou tells him that it is never too late to rediscover oneself. Nick is energized by the statement, so he decides to perform his gig. He finally gets on stage at the Kodiak Club and delivers a stellar performance. Meanwhile, Jacob returns to the hotel room to find the repairman there. The latter reveals that the key to their time travel is the Chernobyl, because it has special chemicals which assist in the time travel process. On the other hand, Blaine thinks Lou is a Russian spy and shares his theories with his friends. One of them suggests calling the cops, but Blaine insists on handling it themselves. Eventually, Adam, April, and Jacob meet up with Nick at the club where he's performing. Outside, Lou is left alone to confront Blaine and his friends. Nick's performance is well received, and Adam congratulates him. But just then, Jacob interrupts, reminding them of the importance of finding Chernobyl and returning to the hot tub. When he asks for Lou, they realize that they're late to defend him against Blaine and the bullies. Worried, they rush outside and eventually find him drinking on the roof. Lou accuses his friends of cutting him out, and as he continues to rant, he slips off the roof. The others manage to get a hold of him, but due to the slippery surface, even they are on the verge of falling. Fortunately, Phil arrives just in time to save them. After the incident, Lou reveals that Blaine has his bag containing the Chernobyl, and as a result, the group sets out to find him. On their way, Adam runs into April, who is now leaving. She invites him to come with her, but Adam feels obligated to help his friends. Before departing, April hugs him and whispers that maybe the universe will bring them back together in the future. Phil then drives the group to the ski patrol lodge, where Nick and Adam go straight to Blaine's room and begin searching for Chernobyl. However, Nick becomes distracted by a photo of his wife, Courtney. Unable to control his emotions, he calls Courtney, who is 
only nine years old, and yells at her about the evils of adultery. Luckily, before he could reveal anything more, Adam and Jacob managed to take the phone away from him. In the meantime, as Lou is checking another room, he is approached by Kelly. They engage in a sarcastic conversation, which surprisingly turns her on. Soon after, the other group members enter the room in search of Lou, only to find him in bed with Kelly. The sight infuriates Jacob, and he jumps to stop the intercourse, but soon, he disappears. This finally reveals that Jacob's father is none other than Lou. Since the teenager interrupted the coitus, he was never born, and that's why he disappeared. Realizing all of this, Adam reluctantly allows his friend to continue doing his sister. When Lou finally finishes, Jacob reappears, hence proving their theory. Later, as they exit the room, Blaine confronts them, holding the precious Chernobyl. He boldly challenges Lou to try and take it from him, and this time he finds the courage to tackle Blaine and beat him up. In the midst of the commotion, the other members quickly retrieve the Chernobyl, and they all rush back to the hot tub time machine. Before departing, Phil bids them farewell, but as he waves his hand, a snowplower passes by him, slicing off his right arm. The group then reaches the hot tub and activates the vortex. Jacob and Nick are the first to step inside, but Lou suddenly decides to stay behind, because he believes he can make positive changes in his life. Adam tries to convince him to come along, but Lou confesses that his carbon monoxide poisoning was actually deliberate, and he's afraid he might try it again if he returns to the present. Lou intends to use his knowledge of the future to make profitable investments and build a better relationship with Kelly and Jacob. After hearing this, Adam says that he wants to stay too, but Lou pushes him into the hot tub, just as it blasts the group back to 2010. After their wild time travel adventure, the group returns to their hotel room and discovers a DVD player. They curiously watch a video and are amazed to see Lou on a luxurious yacht, revealing that he has used his future knowledge to become wealthy and has married Kelly. They are also surprised to see that Phil's arms are still intact. He explains that Blaine and his crew were able to save his severed arm by quickly icing it and taking him to a nearby hospital for reattachment. Furthermore, they learn that Lou has become a renowned rock star and has also founded an internet search engine called Lugal. Oh, did I write that joke? Later on, Adam enters his new home where he is greeted by his loving wife, April. Nick is now a thriving music producer who is happily married to Courtney, a faithful and supportive partner. Courtney shares with Nick that when she was only nine years old, she received a wrong number phone call that made her vow to never cheat on anyone. In the end, Adam, Nick, Lou, and Jacob reunite at Lou's mansion, surrounded by their happy families and content with their new lives. Subscribe for more videos like this turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.